So you're maybe thinking of starting a food garden, whether it's a vegetable garden or a food forest or something else, you know, you're thinking about it and you might have that little voice in your mind saying, is it worth the time? Is it worth the money? What should I even try growing? And it can sometimes be daunting because when I think back to when I first started gardening and I would watch videos out on YouTube, which I loved, a lot of people I was watching had acres and acres of land, which if they were gonna grow a lot of food, of course they had acres. But for us who live in the suburbs and in the city, I don't have that kind of space. So could I grow any amount of food that was more or less meaningful other than maybe having like a tomato plant? Could I actually grow pounds and pounds of food that made a difference? Could I truly go as local as you can get, right? I mean, we talk about the local movement, but nothing's more local than your own yard. So I'm gonna go over today what were the goals for this year and how did we do versus last year. I'm gonna talk about what drove the most pounds. I'm gonna go over the top five what drove the most amount of savings because those necessarily aren't the same thing. And then we're gonna set up what are the goals for this coming year? So, and what's kind of the plan for it? And the other thing I wanted to talk about is because of all those videos I used to watch with all the acres of land, which I love them, but a lot of what this food that I'm gonna talk about, most of it was grown in probably about 500 square feet. So it was mostly coming out of my mini food forest and a little bit in the front yard vegetable garden on this urban homestead. So not a ton of space. The big piece that you're seeing right behind me right now actually hasn't driven but maybe a couple pounds so far. And it's relatively new, so it's not such a big deal. I'm expecting to, it, it's gonna you know, up its game in this coming year. But I wanted you guys to know that because you don't have to have acres of land in order to grow hundreds of pounds of food. You just have to be smart about what you're growing. And you also have to decide on your goals. Is it about the pounds or is it about the savings? Because sometimes they're not the same thing. So let's get into it. Let's talk about this year, what drove the pounds, what saved the money, and what are we gonna do for this coming year? So at the end of 2019, going into 2020, I put together a video calling Growing Food is Easy, where I talked about what were the winners, the unexpected ones who were driving results, and I gave some recommendations on things that I thought people should consider growing for Florida. If you wanna check out that original video there. And I went over how many pounds I grew in my yard in 2019, and it was 154 pounds, saving us um, just over $300, which was amazing. So that's about $2 per pound which is awesome, right? And this year's goal for 2020 was supposed to be grow 250 pounds, so a whole additional 100 pounds, which if you looked at the title of the video, you know I already beat that. So this year, the total that we hit was about 325 pounds of food. Yes, I know, who's psyched about that? I know I am. And we saved about $550, which is amazing. So let's jump right into the pounds. So who drove the most amount of pounds for the year? Well, it had to be the heavyweight, the champ, America's number one favorite fruit, bananas. So bananas for us, I think in 2019, were about 25 to 35 pounds. And this year they made about 175 pounds. So all these bananas came from four plants, two dwarf Cavendishes in our food forest, one giant Grand Nain in our food forest, a dwarf Cavendish on the north side of our property. And so those four plants made a lot of pounds. But I'm gonna tell you the Grand Nain, which was just hitting about one year old, put out two bunches of bananas. And each of those bunches was about 50 to 60 pounds. So it drove most of the weight. And I'm really excited for this because up here in our urban homestead, our front yard vegetable garden, we've got two more Grand Nains being added. So I think when we come to this coming year, we're gonna have more bananas than we're gonna know what to do with. But I'm really excited for this. And that's why I want people to hear some of this stuff is because a lot of people, when they think about growing food, think about very traditional vegetable beds like this, which are amazing. But when you're like me, you live in Florida, in central Florida zone 10A, 9B, kind of depends on the map I look at, um, you should start thinking outside the box. And even if you don't live in a subtropical, tropical area, thinking outside the box to these bigger plants, these are the things that can drive some big pound. And I talked to you, it's about four plants that I had, but honestly, I only bought two, one dwarf Cavendish and one granate. All the other bananas are just propagated from those original two. So this plant has paid for, both of these plants, the original ones have paid for themselves once, twice, 10 times over now. So they've been a great investment and they've driven a lot of pounds for us. Number two for driving pounds for us had to be 
that's right, right behind me, sweet potatoes at 66 pounds of actual sweet potatoes and five pounds of sweet potato greens. This drove 71 pounds of food for us. This is an amazing crop. I love this one. One, it's an easy cover crop too. You know, I know a lot of northerners and a lot of people are getting into vegetable gardening. You'll hear that these are easy to start, but they kind of can be finicky, but that's because a lot of people who are talking about them live up north. For us in Florida, these are super, super easy to grow. Like you should totally grow these. Even if you have to do it in a container, they are super easy. Like literally just go to the store, buy an organic sweet potato. It has to be organic because there's stuff that they do, the non-organic ones. And you literally just like put it in a bucket with a bunch of mulch and some dirt at the base and like boom. Or like put it in a little vegetable garden, put a ton of mulch down on it and boom, you've got tons of sweet potatoes. So this one did about, let me see. So I said 71 pounds between both. So this was great. I think I did about 20, 25 pounds more than what we got in 2019. So it was awesome. We did two full harvests and we expanded the area that we were growing in. And we haven't even harvested fully the new area that we're growing in. So I expect in 2021, we're gonna have a lot more. And what's great about this for Florida is that it grows year round, especially if you live in central or south Florida, or you live in a similar subtropical, tropical climate. So if you're in a nine zone or a 10 zone or warmer, year round and that's great so even though you only harvest these every four to six months which means you can get two or three crops from it you can be harvesting the greens all year round and these are great spinach substitutes so i'm really looking forward to upping our game on this coming year because i dragged my feet on using these as a spinach substitute but now i i've been I've seen the light i've changed my mind these are great so use them in salads use them in smoothies yes use the sweet potato greens Number three for us was mulberries. Yes, around the mulberry bush we may go. And this was the first year this plant put out, I think last year it put out one pound. This year it put out 29 pounds of mulberries. And if you're not familiar with mulberries, I would say it's kind of a between a raspberry and a blackberry in taste. They look a lot like blackberries, but they don't have that hard center. So these are great to grow in Florida. You can grow all the other types of berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries in Florida, but there's just a little more limited season in which they'll grow. And because they tend to be lower to the ground, they'll be more prone to getting pests versus your mulberry bushes and mulberry trees. I have two ever bearing mulberries. These are up off the ground. Yes, they can get squirrels. Yes, they can get birds in them, but they can still put out lots and lots of pounds. Mine finally paid for themselves. So I had two, I think each of them were like $25 to buy. I did a whole video on it if you want to check it out on the return on investment, how long it took. But these are great plants. I am so happy that I heard about these and got convinced to put these in the yard because I love this because we use a lot of berries in the year, like a lot. So 29 pounds, mulberries came in number three. Number four, number four is gonna be pumpkins. This literally was not a thing we were trying to grow. Um, we had taken out a pine in the middle of here cause it, it just died. We were told it had like two years left and literally a year from that conversation, the pine just went and was done. So we had it removed. The termites have broken down the root system really well. It looked like some really great soil. So my kiddo, he had some pumpkin seeds. I think we bought them or maybe they were from um, the pumpkins from Halloween. I'm not really sure. We just put the seeds in there for fun. It was literally just like a non thing we were doing. And then all of a sudden, boom, I had pumpkins. Not a ton. I had never grown pumpkins before. So this was kind of a cool one. And no, these were not seminal pumpkins. I know so many of us Floridians always hear about the seminal pumpkins and how great they do. They were not. I honestly, here's what I do know. And this is a trick tip, quick tip trick is that um, I actually bought them from a local farmer for when we did Halloween for some of the seeds. Um, so we just got the pumpkins rotted down and then there were pumpkin seeds there. So he grows in the same county I do. So they just tended to do really well. And honestly, they were more pest resistant than I thought they would be. They actually, the leaves kept growing and the vines kept growing all the way into the middle of the summer until I just, we ripped them out and put this whole thing in. So number four was pumpkins. Number five, number five for pounds was oranges and it only came in at 10 pounds. I think the year before we got 20, maybe 30 pounds of oranges. Citrus, y'all know, is not doing well generally across the state. So I would think it was in 2018 18, we've got even more pounds of oranges. Last year was 20, this year's 10. I'm gonna tell you 2021, I think I only see like five oranges on the tree, which is crazy because that thing flowered so much. There were so many bees on it. I was excited that we were actually gonna have like a nice turnaround year on the orange tree, but no, it's no. 
And it's not just that, we also have calamondins, which are a citrus plant that comes out of the Philippines. And the one that's normally put out four, five, six little crops throughout the year, it only really put out one, maybe call it two this year. It really, the citrus just didn't do well. And it seems like the entire state is just not getting as big of a citrus crop this year. So it might just be just generally the weather and that a lot of the crops put out really well this past year, but it was my number five item. So consider citrus we are in florida it is a thing that can produce well but it's really challenged at this time so enough about the pounds let's talk about the money so when it comes to the savings what is the biggest cost avoider for you if you're growing it it's got to be mulberries that's right berries are super expensive and when i was doing the pricing to figure out a comparison i actually just used i think blackberry raspberry prices because they were the most similar to i guess if we had produced mulberries in the same way and yeah, it came in at just under $200 saved for those 29 pounds. Berries are expensive. <laughs> and the thing is, is we eat a lot of berries. So what it told me is that when we go into this coming year, I need to be thinking about how am I expanding berries? because we eat a lot of them, like a lot, a lot. So whether it's gonna be mulberries or some other types of berries, we're gonna be growing more berries as much as possible. Yeah, mulberries, who'd have thunk? Number two, just over $100 at $113 was bananas. Yeah, so even though it drove a ton of pounds, bananas don't actually save you a lot of money because bananas are really cheap. And kind of going back to that whole like, Though our food travels 1300 miles to get to us bananas are a big part of that bananas usually are grown in central america and then shipped all over the united states they come a really long way and i get it if you live up in like illinois new york like you're probably not going to be able to grow bananas actually i'm pretty sure without a lot of effort you're not growing bananas but for us in florida like why are we not all growing bananas i know we all have like citrus trees but bananas is a really great one and they're super super easy to grow so bananas, number two for saving money, but not that good for cost per pound. Doesn't matter, I still eat bananas every day, so we're growing them. <laughs> number three for saving money was sweet potatoes at just $100. And this is just for the actual potato part. This saved us a lot of money. And what was really cool is we started coming up with new dishes. So I think Ben made sweet potato gnocchi and we did this really cool twice baked uh, Mexican sweet potato dish with the egg in it. It was really yummy. So sweet potatoes, again, like I cannot say much about enough about this one, but coming in number four, this, this was the surprise. So number four, I, I, I didn't realize this. I knew it was saving us money. I just did not realize how much it was sweet potato leaves. It saved us about $55 this year. And we only did about five to six pounds of sweet potato leaves. This just like literally like blew my mind that the sweet potato leaves, because they're being acting as a spinach substitute, they literally, so you know this coming year, sweet potato leaves all day long. We're, gonna, we're just gonna eat sweet potato leaves all the time. <laughs> we're not gonna eat sweet potato leaves all the time, but literally like this is one that we gotta be upping our game on because Wow, a lot, of, I mean, it's a two for one crop. So that means the sweet potato plants together saved us about $155, which is amazing. So if you are on the fence about sweet potatoes, like literally grow sweet potatoes. I have a video on it, how easy it is. There's a cute one, that's, there's a duck, like you'll see, it's fun. And number five, number five for savings has not been on the list yet. We haven't talked about it. That's right, at $39 saves, it is green onions. Yeah, green onions are a really good dollar per pound. We only grew about, what was it, two to three pounds of green onions, not a ton. But honestly, they are such a good, I and mean, again, super easy to grow. It, like, like sweet potatoes, green onions, bananas. If, just do that, you will save a lot of money and you will have lots of pounds of food that you could be proud of. And super, super easy to grow here in Florida in the subtropics and tropics, like do those, do those. So green onions, I love, love, love these ones because you can grow them from scraps. Literally just go buy green onions from the store. You'll have the little roots, put them in some water if you feel like you can't just put them in the ground or just put them in the ground and they will get going generally. So green onions is a great, great one to grow. And so we only did a little bit this coming year. We're going to be doing a lot more. I've been doing the calculations, trying to figure out what it is that we should, how much we should be growing of each plant. and. Green onions, we got up our game. We got like triple that game this coming year. 
So you probably noticed a lot of the plants I talked about were not the classics. They weren't the tomatoes and the lettuces and the broccolis and the beans, right? We had a lot of, actually, if you think about what I talked about, all the major plants that drove food for the year were subtropical and tropical plants because Florida, right? Florida, things like broccoli, while you can grow them here, they just are not gonna do as well as some of these other plants. So if you're looking for help as a beginner gardener or maybe you're new to Florida or you just need something helpful, I put together a free seasonal calendar. That's right, free, because you know, I'm all about helping people save money. And I'm gonna put it in the description and the link below. So go check out wildfloridian.net slash calendar. This free seasonal gardening calendar will help keep you on kind of keeping the right things in mind of what you should be thinking about throughout the year. Plus kind of laying out your own plan of how are you gonna grow your 100, 200, 300, 500, maybe you're going to grow a thousand pounds this next year. So it'll help you get your game plan together. So go ahead and check that out at wildfloridian.net slash calendar. Link will be in the description and I'll pin it up in the comments down below. And before we get into what's the plan for this coming year, I want to talk a little bit about why 250 pounds when I first started became a much more meaningful number as we went into the year. So originally the reason I did 250 pounds was like, I did 150, could I do 100 more? I was not quite ready to say like, I'm going to double it because that was daunting. And I kind of had a plan of how I could get to 250. But 250 became more meaningful, right, as the whole the pandemic and like how much food do people really need and eat and and I was looking at some information by the USDA, that's the United States Department of Agriculture. And when you look at the average family of four, which we are a family of four, on average, the American family eats about 2,600 pounds of fruits and vegetables for the year. So 250 pounds is 10%. And that became kind of this nice number to kind of shoot for was like, could we make 10% of our fruits and vegetables? Now we probably eat a little bit more than the average American family, but still it was a really good goal to start with. And so then now as we're going this next year, I want to up the game to 20%. So when I think about this coming year, while it would be lovely to say that we're going to grow all our food on our land. Look, I don't even have an acre. I don't have half an acre. We have just about somewhere near like a quarter to a third of an acre. And that's obviously got a house on it and like a driveway, but going for about 20% or 500 pounds of food this coming year coming out of our garden, is really daunting <laughs> but I'm really gonna shoot for it and I've got a game plan so let me share with you what I'm thinking and how I think I'm gonna get there and I want to talk you through that so that as you start thinking about your coming year what are you gonna go and try and also know that there's some of these plants like some of the big pound ones like the bananas mulberries it took over a year for them to really get going but whoa were they worth it versus something like a sweet potato within that year you're gonna start getting 10 20 pounds of food like that and you'll also notice what you didn't hear on the list. I think a lot of people, when they think about growing food, it's the tomatoes, it's the peppers, it's the lettuces. And yes, we grow those. And yes, we do get pounds of those, but they just aren't as much as we would get out of these other plants. A lot of these pounds literally came out, other than the sweet potatoes, most of it came out of that mini food forest, which is 250 square feet. Even when I look at like the tomatoes and peppers that we got through the year, it all comes out of a really small section of our yard. So something for you to think about, hopefully that helps you think like, yeah, I can do this too. But let's think about how are we gonna get to 500 pounds because, you know, yeah. So how are we gonna get there? So for the 500 pounds, the first pounds that I'm gonna go after is 225 pounds of bananas. And this has becomes a really, really important number for our family because I did some kind of rough math and I figured out that in order to cover all the bananas we use in a year for our morning smoothie, we would need to grow just under 225 pounds. And I figure a couple go bad, fine. So could, do I think this is possible? Yeah, I yes, I do. And the reason is, is because we know that that grand name banana put out 120 pounds and I've added two more of those plants. I propagated them in the front yard vegetable garden. So I think we're going to, and it's already, the one of them's already got a rack on it. So that's going to end up being 50 to 60 pounds right there. If I can get another rack off that one and that one, I mean, we're going to get there. I'm pretty sure we can get really darn close to that. So first 225 pounds, that is going to be banana. And then when it comes to the next item, it's going to be sweet potatoes. So I'm trying to shoot for a hundred pounds of these sweet potatoes. And I'm not talking the greens. I'm just talking about the tubers. And there's a couple of reasons. One, we use the sweet potatoes in a lot of different like lunchtime meals, dinner meals. And oh, you probably didn't notice, but I grow two different types. So we do like kind of more traditional oranges. And then these ones, these are still sweet potatoes, but they're white inside and they're not very sweet. They're more like a potato, a little bit richer in a way. I don't know how to explain it, but they are. So these are 
great potato substitute. So I really want to up the game, especially with these, because then we can put these in some other dishes that we use potatoes for. And we didn't realize that as much last year. So this year, mm, 100 pounds, sweet potatoes. The next thing, so let's see, we've got 225, 100, we're at 325. So that's a long way there, which is two crops. But number three thing that we're gonna do is I wanna try to shoot for 50 pounds of mulberries. This one I feel like is a big stretch. We got those 29 pounds off the two trees. The one tree was more cramped. I've tried to open up some space for it. I've given both of them a prune. I'm gonna give one of them a hard prune, do a little bit of testing to see how much that dries. And I have propagated one of them to the backyard but I know it takes like a year before they really are gonna put out some fruit so I don't expect that to do anything but maybe maybe and also if we stay on top of harvesting because we were very new to how much mulberries come in the spring so that plus some propagation stuff I'm gonna try throughout the year I'm hoping between that that we could get 50 pounds but that's a big stretch and I know that one so yeah that gets us to 375 so we're at 375. The next one I'm also shooting, I'm thinking we're gonna get 50 pounds of it. I have no idea what we're gonna do with it. I have ideas, but like, and that is papaya. We got some free papaya from some little animal who left his little poops and in it was papaya seeds. And now I've got two papaya plants going and one, it's got so many papayas on it and not one has come ripe yet. So I know basically that this coming year we're gonna have a lot and looking at the plant a tree papaya tree I guess it's not technically a tree but whatever I there's got to be about 50 pounds of fruit on there so yes I think 50 pounds of papaya that I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with if you have ideas feel free to leave it in the comments below <laughs> oh just to come back to the mulberry for a second so I know I'm stretching for 50 pounds and I know this is not like I did a calculation to figure out how many berries do we eat in a year and it's about 175 pounds oh my gosh we have a long way to go for mulberries. So while we might be able to meet our banana needs next year, like I've been racking my brain of like, how many mulberry trees, tree bushes do I need to get to that 175? Oh my gosh. I might be adding different berry plants throughout the year because that's a big, like that's a big gap to close. We got a ways to go on berries for sure. Okay, so of the 500, we're now at 425 so the next one is to get 25 pounds of sweet potato leaves so we only got about five to six pounds this year so this is a lot more but I went in again did some math I know I'm all about the math I love me some math and I figured that we use in spinach for our morning smoothies about 35 pounds and this is a rough estimate because when we normally buy a spinach container some amount of it gets composted because we don't use it at the rate at which like we we don't you know, there's more coming in that's going out, so then more has to go to compost. You get what I'm saying with that, right? Right. So because of that, I don't know that we necessarily need 35 pounds because of some amount of it typically is going to compost. And since we can harvest sweet potato leaves as we need them, like, I'm not sure. So I'm shooting for 25 pounds, and we know that that's going to drive some big savings if I don't have to buy any spinach this coming year. So that would be like a big goal. Don't buy any bananas. Don't buy any spinach for our morning smoothies wow what an amazing thing to be able to do so 25 pounds brings us up to 450 so that leaves us just with 50 pounds of miscellaneous stuff and from beans and i really want to up our game on tomatoes this year i mean we've got these awesome cattle panel trellises so definitely you're going to see a lot on tomatoes this year i've got mini pumpkins going we're going to have some different types of squash going we got this garlic i'm going to be all about the peppers this year i'm super excited for that we've got onions we got the broccoli. I mean, the broccoli heads come in. Those got to be about half a pound to a pound a piece. So, I mean, those will be great. We got carrots going in the food force. There's so much stuff going on. I'm sure between all that, plus the calamondins, the oranges, and some of the other plants that you'll get to see more about this coming year, that between all that, we're going to be able to hit this 500 pounds. If I did all my math right and everything goes okay, which, you know, we can't control everything, but goals, right? Visioning. Yes. We can do it. So how are we feeling? Are we feeling inspired, excited? Maybe some anxiety. We're not really sure if we can do it. Okay, 
Remember, just take it bit by bit. Start with easy plants at the right time of year. And again, if you need help figuring out what the right time of year is, go to wildfloridian.net slash calendar. You'll get your free seasonal gardening calendar, which will help you at a glance figure out what's the right season to grow things like these sweet potatoes and even things like those tomatoes, because we all love a classic tomato. I'm not against them. They just didn't drive the most pounds. So get that in the description or I'll pin it in the comments down below. And throughout the year, I'm always talking to my Florida gardener. So to make sure you don't miss all the videos with the tips and the tricks so that you can have find the joy of Florida gardening with native and edible plants go ahead and like subscribe and ring that bell for notifications new videos each week on Friday and sometimes a bonus on Sunday and while you wait for the next video go ahead and check out this this and YouTube thinks you'll like this okay I'll see you soon bye